And I used to go to, if you're familiar with the store, I think it's called West 49, like a yep. skate, you know? So I remember one day I was in the mall. I said, okay, I, I don't know. I don't know where to start, but I got to do it. I don't want to do it, but I got to push myself. I went to the store. I'm like, okay, I'm a musician. This is my card. Is there anyone in the store that plays music? I literally want to start a band. want to do something. <laughs> wow. <laughs> This is all about the sound. Welcome to the 125th episode of All About the Song. I am your host, Michael McDonnell, and thank you for joining us. On the podcast today, and this is the first, we've never done this on the podcast, I'm doing the intro with guest, we have Alessandro Montelli. And I'm really excited to do this podcast. We have an episode that was to be out this week. It will be out next week. We are waiting for some approval. It is an international artist, and sometimes that's a little bit different to set up. So, Alessandra, I got to say thank you so much for pinch hitting and uh, doing this podcast with us today. Alessandro has been releasing music for the last little while, but I've got to say you've been taking this pandemic by storm you just released a new single this year called Life. Congratulations. What's it like to have this single out? Thanks, man. Um, I feel like it's my first real single that I put out here in, in Toronto. I'm not sure if you know, but uh, for those of you who don't know, I grew up in Italy and I moved to Toronto in 2016. So I kind of had to start everything from scratch. But then, you know, I found the right producer and we kept working and building songs together in the past two years, I guess. And this is the first single. So it's really the first time that I'm doing, I'm actually realizing what doing stuff like music independently really means. And, you know, grow your audience and your Spotify and, and all that. So, but it's been, it's been exciting. It's been a busy two months uh, these ones that we just passed. <laughs> well, no kidding. I mean, I got to, so I got to say, before we get into the experience of coming to Canada from Italy, with this song that you released, Life, it is, uh, it's a really unique song. I really enjoy it. One of the great mm -hmm. things is the, you know, the singer songwriter strumming on guitar that you begin mm -hmm. with, that I think is kind of like, uh, if I, to make an assumption, it's like you're a true state or you're, you know, your, yeah. your single form to take such a drastic change. I was kind of blown away. Like I, I, I put it on Spotify. I was making lunch and all of a sudden the song, you know, as the song keeps going, I was like, Oh my God, I did not expect this huge yeah, pulsing. <laughs> you know, I was just, well, I just went to check. I'm like, did the song skip? But it, then it was you and the vocals came in, of course, but like, you know, you have these, these like heavy rhythms and this, this, uh, like the drums, for example, and this pulsing bass and, it, it was fantastic, and I loved the the transition from the singer songwriter to guitar mid song to this heavy produced uh, this element yeah. that you added. It was amazing. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. We I actually wrote that one two years ago, and then you know my producer Adam uh, Adam he he's been working on it for for a little while, and uh, yeah, I, I love it. I feel like you said it's. It's different. It's different from what I've been doing in the past. And it's going to be different from what I'm going to do next. So, I don't, you know, it's just unique, like you said. I love it. What has it been like coming to Toronto? I'm sort of just like on a personal level that, you know, it's a total life change. But as you say, this is your first, you know, North American music release. Sonically, how has that transition been for you? Well, like you said, I had to kind of find myself and my sound um, again. Uh, in Italy, I was kind of doing indie, indie rock, indie pop. Uh, I released a couple singles in uh, 2016, but then I, I already wanted to, I'd been wanting to um, move to Toronto for, for a while. And then, you know, I kind of just did it and... Uh, yeah, I had to make all the connection and uh, start all over again working with people here. But, How come uh, Toronto? Sorry to interrupt. How come you wanted to move to Toronto? Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, um, I've always been coming to Toronto back and forth when I was, you know, since I was a kid because 
my mom was born here and uh, half of my family is still here. Um, so, yeah, so that's the main reason. And then I grew up listening to mainly Canadian artists uh, in, the, in the punk rock scene and uh, alternative. And, uh, you know, I was just inspired by mostly by that type of music, which is not really successful in Italy, if you do it. Right. If you do it there, of course, we have like metal band and uh, punk rock bands, and some of them are even big in Italy. But it's not the main market. There's not that much, uh, yeah, that much opportunity if you want to do that type of music. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to experience doing music here and, and find my own path here. That's how are I felt. Some of the Canadian bands that you're referring to, I saw in your uh, biography, Billy mm-hmm. Talent, for example. Are these bands you're, you're, dis- you're thinking about? Yeah, yeah, Billy Talent, Sum 41, uh, Every Levine, uh, like all these bands that I grew up listening to, Silverstein. Uh, and, you know, at one point I didn't even know that some of these bands were actually from Toronto or around Toronto. And when I began living here in Canada, I, I realized that and I was blown away, you know, like so many talented artists uh, that are big and they're from here, you know, so, yeah kind of makes me proud and on the other at the same time makes you feel like you can you can also make it you know with the right work and right people you know what I mean well, well it's also interesting too that these bands <clears throat> that you mentioned were for me homegrown artists the story you know some 41 coming from Ajax Ontario or Napanee Ontario you we saw them more coming up so it's, I'm sure that you have also a, a bit of a different perspective on these artists because you did not find out about them because they were from the same city that you are, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I found out about them, you know, through MTV and, uh, you know, music uh, music uh, programs or music shows back then. And, I mean, I'll be honest, I was, I was a fanboy, right? I was a fan of all these bands. And I began writing music and uh, performing, also thanks to them. Um, yeah, so it's it's fun that I'm here now and uh, somehow you feel more connected with all the, the music reality here, you know? When was your first trip to Toronto? How old were you? <laughs> okay, I got to think about it. Um, I was probably like two years old, man. Yeah, I have pictures of me as a kid and I have birthday here with my grandma and uh, all, all my family here. So I literally came back and forth every every three years, every two, three years. Did yeah. you do like the touristy things or because you had family, did you just <laughs> hang out with your family or did you exhibition? Yeah, every, every time we, we would come here, we would go to Niagara Falls and uh, uh, West Saga Beach, like all the, or get a house on the lake. Um, yeah, like typical, typical things that you do in Canada, basically, uh, which I'm not doing that much now. Uh, I mean, I've been in Canada and Toronto for almost five years. Next summer will be five years. Uh, but yeah, like I, I you know, I, I know Niagara Falls and know everything that you could do around here <laughs> with my own pockets, and I'm also kind of tired of it. But uh, yeah, it's it's nice though, yeah. <laughs> well, the, I think the, the thing that intrigues me about the experience of looking at Toronto from that perspective is, is that when you are from here and maybe specific to being from Toronto, there's a bit of a self-deprecation that a lot of artists have. And there's a lot of talk always about not being in Toronto, going somewhere else like New York and LA. So Mm. it's nice for me to think of Toronto as being a destination for someone. And I understand for you, there's also the family element and there's the seeing it for so many years, but it's just really cool to, for you to be in Toronto uh, for what it has to offer on a cultural level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I had the chance to connect with the Italian community. Uh, I'm Italian, in case I didn't say that. But um, yeah. I think we took we figured it out because of your name. <laughs> I mean, some people could still think that it's Spanish or something. But That's true. Yeah, I got a lot of that. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I've been here for over five years. It's it's been exciting. It's still like you said, cool and exciting. And uh, I'm, I'm trying to grow here as an artist. 
but I won't, I, I would lie to you if I didn't say that I also want to go to LA or I, I already been in New York actually a few times, never performed, but hopefully one day, you know, but LA it's, it's another destination that I would love to experience at least for a few months, you know, mm -hmm. to make connections there and uh, do music with, with some friends over in the future, you know? So yeah. <laughs> what age were you when you first got into music? Do you remember the first time that, uh, I mean, you thought of it as a thing? Yeah, I think I was uh, 15 when I really started discovering my, my voice and my, my, my singing voice. And I started thinking, okay, I, I probably, you know, probably this is my path and I feel like I'm so connected with the, the, the singing part of the music that I, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life, right? So that's, that's, that's what I thought. And I was only 15, but... You know, it just came after years and years of playing piano and performing just piano concerts. And uh, yeah, basically. Were you forced to play the piano? Like, was this just, or was <laughs> it something you wanted to do? Uh, I would say 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> I say that because I literally remember uh, the moment my mom told me, okay, you're, you, you need to choose an instrument. Like, you're 10 years old now. You got to step it up and, you know, start, start learning a real instrument, which is, you know, guitar, bass, uh, piano. And she said, well, you know what? Your dad really loves piano. He likes the idea of the piano. I'm like, okay, I'll give it a try. <laughs> wow. But yeah. But uh, a few years later, I'm like, okay, I wish I really got into guitar more because then I started listening to all the bands that I mentioned. And, you know, I started feeling more like, like uh, as a rock rock person, you know what I mean. And uh, but I didn't know how to play guitar, so I had that that type of issue, and I had to figure it out later on in life, you know. I think the <laughs> piano is such a great instrument to know because it, I, you know, as you know now. But mm -hmm. there are a lot of friends that I've had that were forced to play the piano as a kid, and then they maybe, you know, got into other interests, whatever, sort of playing soccer or something. Then mm -hmm. got into guitar as you did and had that background knowledge from piano, the music theory, composition, all of a sudden you learn how to make a couple of, uh, you learn what a power chord is on the guitar. You learn, you know, your, your, your four chords that can kind of get you by. And all of a sudden, all of this musical knowledge uh, translates from piano to the guitar in a sense. And then you're off to the races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of the same for me. I'm actually still learning power chords and, uh, you know, some stuff like solos and stuff I I'm more like uh I'm more of a ryth rhythm guitarist you know what I mean but um yeah for sure like you said the the piano knowledge helped me a lot cuz now I can literally hop on the on the drums and play drums and I'm pretty sure if I pick up a bass I would know how to figure it out you know what I mean so it's uh, yeah like you said they what what they told me when I was a kid is like the piano is the main instrument is like the the mother of all the instruments and that's what kind of convinced me <laughs> to get into it uh, but it was mainly classical music that I was playing so at one point I was like nah this is not for me anymore <laughs> well as I've been over this uh pandemic I've been producing a classical music show oh. on CIUT 89.5 the sound of your city. I'm getting ready. I want a radio show on that show. <laughs> so I'm getting ready with my plugs. But Please. there's a lot to understand. It's funny to, as I'm doing it in a backwards sense, where yeah. I'm taking all this like indie rock music that I like and these different, you know, even like 70s prog rock and 80s hip hop. And I'm hearing all of these things now in these classical songs that were composed hundreds of years ago. Do you find writing modern music, you're taking elements of your classical training and applying it to your current sound? Well, uh, I, I guess, like you said, because I'm, I grew up playing piano, so um, most of my songs still starts with, start with either piano or guitar. And when I play piano, I would you know, go crazy on the piano because of what I, what I learned as a, as a kid, right? So I know how to do solos or whatever on the piano. I can, I have, I feel like I don't have limitations on that. Uh, but I wouldn't say I take, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm inspired by classical music though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Those songs are so long. They're <laughs> so, so long. We're not yeah. built with that attention span anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So like two minutes right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. In, so at uh, 15, you're starting to play the guitar. You're getting into music. You found your passion. What were your first live performances like? Um, well, I mean, if we're talking about just piano, I started, I don't know, probably 11, 12 years old. And I remember I would mess up, you know, during a concert uh, at, the, at the city hall in my, in my town back home. Or, um, yeah, and I did that for seven years and I would, you know, <laughs> shit my pants. And <laughs> I was just a kid, right? So I would, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember all that, you know, I was very excited. And some, sometimes it was frustrating too, right? When you mess up notes and it's just piano. Yeah. Or if you play with another pianist, but when I really started getting into performing as a singer was probably my high school when I was 17, 17, 18. Yeah. And what it was, was it like? Like, I'm yeah. sure that that was a different experience than doing a recital, like set up differently, mm -hmm. uh, different age. Did yeah. you feel, did you feel different? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I guess the only thing I was adding was the vocals and, my stage presence and all that, that again, came from watching all the, the videos or the music video, the MTVs and the bands and everything that I love. And I was kind of, I guess at the beginning, Im imitating all that. Um, but yeah, I definitely felt different. And I started feeling like, okay, I, I can be a front man. I can be a singer. Uh, I know how to, you know, how to, to be on stage. There was, a, there was actually a, a music program in my high school. Um, from a guy called Rafael Nicoli. And he was the one who kind of taught us how to be in a band, you know, to be in a band, how to perform during school uh, festivals of school contests and all that. And yeah, it was definitely interesting. We would play uh, Evanescence, uh, Amy Winehouse, like every, any type of Elton John, any type of song as a band. And that also taught me how to you know, perform with the band. That was probably the first time I did that. Wow, that's, I mean, what a experience to have someone just give you the confidence to mm. support you and, and keep you in line in a sense. It's got, it's got to be helped to have support like that at the beginning too. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah. go to other schools and perform outside of our own school and comfort zone, if you want to say that. Uh, we would travel a bit. Yeah, it, it was a little touring as uh, high school kids, but yeah, it was cool. <laughs> That's great because the alternatives can be uh, dire and really difficult. And it's, mm. I mean, playing for playing those types of gigs are great. Like you can do them during the day, and you're doing them to people your age, and it's in a like safe environment too. Yeah, you're missing class and all that. So that was and, fun. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> That was one of the reasons why I loved it. I hey, I you're talking to the guy that was in every single band he could have. I was played in the Christian rock band. I was in the jazz band. I was in the anything not to be in period four band, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel it. So, when did you start to find your own voice as a songwriter? Mm, I mean, I, I I kept playing in in literally different bands until 20, 2015, 2014. And then I started my own solo project. So that's where I said, okay, I've been writing these songs. <laughs> Any of these bands that I've been with really worked out for me. So it's time for me to, you know, just do it my own, just do it myself, go to studio, you know, invest in my, in my own music, my own career, and, um, you know, just record and uh, work with other producers and find my sound. And uh, yeah, it took it took a while to figure all that out, but that's when I was able to release a single in Italy called Strane Parti di Me. That means strange parts on me, if you want to translate it. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I started going to some radios and uh, local shows and all that and getting a nice response from the industry. So yeah, that was the beginning. But again, like what I'm doing now, it's still different from what I was doing four or five years ago, which is all good. It's part of the growth, I guess. Yeah. I, I did a recording session about 
six years ago for an Italian artist. And I wrote a song. It was like a blues song. It was like a blues ballad, basically. And we worked with a Italian producer. And I remember the way that he took the song and said, through translation, like, we got to make this song for Italy. And we basically took all the rhythm and blues out of it. And it was this uh, more moody song and it was fluid, but it was a real... It was an eye opener for me as a songwriter at the time to if you're writing for, you know, a different area than what you're familiar with, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be very different. People have different taste buds for music, different market and all that. So yeah. did you try to cater towards that Italian mm -hmm. mar market or were you trying to pull away to, to like attempt to do something you're doing currently? Uh, you mean since I moved, when I moved here? No, no, no. But before you moved here, like in Italy, writing songs, yeah, were okay. you aware of what was popular in Italy or were you trying to write something that would be more, like, we'll say Toronto-centric? No, no, of course, of course I was, uh, I was aware of what's, what, what was going on in Italy. I was following the industry and uh, uh, writing with other people, producing with other people, um, and I was kind of following the, the Italian way of doing music, the, the Italian line of doing stuff, right? Um, but yeah, one of the the reason why I wanted to come here is because I always felt like I was kind of limited in Italy. I, I come from the south of Italy, so um, uh, which city? The, 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 the I'm from Bitrito, the town. I, I never say the, the the name of my town for some reason. And, some people back home, they tell me, why, why you never mention? So I think <laughs> it's a small town. It's called Bitrito, but uh, the main city is called Bari. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, but I always felt limited music wise, um, meaning that I would do shows in my own town with, with my bands and, and play English songs. Right. And we will have people that will come at the end of the gig and say, you know, next time, can you, can you please, you know, just sing in Italian? Like, we don't understand what you're saying. You have right. an accent, but we don't get it. So and it was really frustrating uh, most of the times because, you know, I was, I was always okay and good with English. And I knew either way what I wanted to communicate with my voice. But then having people coming to you and telling you, okay, you're great, but, you know, we don't understand you. And, and for that reason, maybe they, sometimes they would, they wouldn't hire you or whatever, you know what I mean? Because I was always doing 50-50. I was singing Italian and English. My first song that I ever wrote in my room was it was English. So, but of course, being in Italy, you kind of, they want you to sing in Italian, like producer, labels, whatever, because you're Italian, right? Yeah. And there, there are some exceptions. There are a few artists, but like, literally, you can count them on, on, your, on your hand, you know? That... Um, they, I think they, there's a purity, though, that they want to maintain as well. There's what? Like a purity in the sense that, like, if, if our artists start singing in Italy, like, we're going to lose the Italian language. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the, the mentality, I guess, uh, behind it. Uh, but, like, so many people like me, they, they grew up listening to international bands or, right. I don't know, like Red Hot Chili Peppers, Muse, um, I don't know, you name it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no. They want to emulate. They want to. They want to do something that feels fresh or international. International, but there's not. There's not too much space for that. And as I said, as I said, there's a few exceptions. A few artists that su succeeded uh, singing. You know, doing albums just in English. But uh, literally, it's like I don't know, five to ten. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's not that many, and that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to to come here and kind of feel free to express myself more in English. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. you came here in 2015? 16. 2016. Mm -hmm. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I said I, I moved here in 2016, yeah. What was the experience like moving here and how were the first few weeks getting adjusted? <laughs> so... Uh, I remember I moved here in July and the first month I was literally, I was literally just chilling man, like having fun, enjoying the summer, uh, going to my, my family's 
backyard and for barbecues and pool or whatever I could do. And I was slowly, slowly getting into the mindset that, okay, I need to start somewhere. I need to find a job. And, you know, because I never been, I've never, I never lived here. So I have to start somewhere. Yeah. And I knew that I always wanted to work in a music store, uh, if I have to be totally honest with you. So I started looking into Long and McQuaid and whatever I had in the area. I The first two years I was living in Bonn, Woodbridge, if you are familiar with the area. Yeah, of course. Yeah, because that's well, where my family mainly lives. But, you know, slowly I realized, okay, I got the job. I'm working as a sales sales associate in uh, in the mall and all that. I'm practicing my English. I'm getting better. I, I, I'm getting to know people, um, you know, making connection, all that. But there was always something missing. And that was the music. You know, I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't able to, to connect with musicians. And, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't really meeting that many musicians. I used to go to, if you're familiar with the store, I think it's called West 49, like a yep. skate, you know. So I remember one day I was in the mall. I said, okay, I, I don't know. I don't know where to start, but I got to do it. I don't want to do it, but I got to push myself. I went to the store. I'm like, okay, I'm a musician. This is my card. Is there anyone in the store that plays music? I literally want to start a band. want to do something. Wow. <laughs> and, and actually that, that, that happened. Like I came back like an hour later or something. And the guy, Dave, uh, Dave Marocco, uh, he was there and he's like, okay, yeah, dude, I, I play drums, guitar, whatever. I listen to Green Day and this and that, punk rock. Yeah, we can definitely, ch- I have a basement with uh, with a full studio and drum set and all that. So, okay, <laughs> cool, that, that's literally what I needed. I'm like, okay, let's start something. We started meeting and then I met another musician on Kijiji, Bradley. And we started a little band. It didn't last long, I'll be honest. <laughs> but but you started... Fun. It was something. Uh, even during the winter, I used to take buses and, you know, I was experiencing my first big snow because yeah. in Italy it doesn't really snow that much like here. And, you know, I remember, I had, you know, I, I didn't have my driving license yet. So I remember I had to bus everywhere from Woodbridge to Richmond Hill to Markham, whatever it was to, for me to, to get in contact with someone, you know, to, to, to start playing with someone. Um, you know, it was little struggles. Like right now I, I, I look back and it, it's nothing, you know, it's past. But at that time, I remember I was like, oh, what the hell am I doing? Like there's, I don't know, 10, 20 centimeters of snow. I'm walking. It's cold as hell. Like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? <laughs> Felt like, a, you know, but everything for the music at the end of the day, like that's, that's what drives me nuts <laughs> and drives me, you know, in, in, a, in a way that I can feel like I have a goal in, in, in my life, you know? Well, you re- you really get to know if you really love it when you have to do it in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I didn't tour or anything big here in Canada. I heard so many stories, like, but yeah. that my, I, I know you, you, you've you been touring a little bit, I guess, right? We, so, we oh, try oh, to be oh, pretty oh. smart with the weather, but there have been a couple of shows that we've been... I've, I played with a band in Sudbury... Uh, in 2019 and mm-hmm. we it started to snow when we started playing we played for like three and a half hours so was and it uh outside, outside show it was yeah. it was indoors but we had to drive home the night of and so we ended up behind the plow that went like 60 kilometers an hour and we drove behind the plow for i think it was like seven or eight hours to get home in the snow and it's just you know it's we're just sitting there being like hey next time we'll come in september like (laughs) let's so you know we always at this point in time i'm i'm kind of cautious and plan plan weather accordingly so yeah yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy how the weather here i don't think i can i can ever get used to it to be honest well i'm I'm trying to work uh, work with it yeah me me too it's terrible let's spade a spade but with regards to playing and starting your first band like the thing that is so important about that though is is that that itch that you know if you have an itch that you can scratch opposed to an itch you can't like you know it takes a lot of guts and i'm sure a lot of people have thought of doing something as crazy as 
giving their business card out to a store you'd think maybe someone would align with you, mm. taking those steps into the store, saying those words, giving them the card, yeah. walking out, realizing that you did it. I mean, that takes a lot of guts. Like that that in itself is a really difficult thing to do. And it was yeah, a I, huge yeah, reward. Over, yeah, thank you. And I overthink uh, most of the time. So I was like, uh, this, this thing that I'm doing feels like like a movie scene, you know, that I'm going to get inside and someone is going to get back to me and we're going to start a band and we're going to be successful, you know? Yeah. But, you know, it kind of worked out. I mean, the band is not together anymore, of course, but like I said, but at least at least I was able to start something and, and get to know these people. And one of these people is still one of my best friends. Uh, he literally messaged me half an hour ago, you want to hang out, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so it's it's... It was good. It was a good experience. What did you do after that? What was the next musical experience? Mm, well, like I said, I've been I've been trying to put myself into musical situation, and uh, I've always been trying to apply to music stores, which I never succeeded in getting a job there. <laughs> but I mean, I don't give up, you know. Um, and other than that. I I found out about Indie Week and Canadian Music Week, and I uh, I just uh, applied and started volunteering for those as a just as a volunteer. So I used to go from you know from Vaughn Woodbridge, take a bus and come downtown, volunteer, come back at four a.m., five a.m. <laughs> My grandparents will would tell me, you know, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it for free? Like why are you? spending this time doing this. And I'm like, okay, you don't understand that. I need to make connections. I need, I need somehow to, to meet people. I can't just stay here in the suburbs and, and feel like I'm not doing anything with my life and not doing music, you know? And yeah, and at one point, I just had to move downtown. And I've been living downtown for the past two years, you know? Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, long journey. <laughs> Well, being here and going to shows, seeing live music, seeing like the Canadian music experience in a sense, how did that shape your songwriting? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, mean, I, was, <laughs> I was definitely inspired, you know, and every time I see somebody on the stage, especially if it's a good act, of course, I'm, I'm like, okay. I know I can do that too. I, I need to get there. I need to get a gig here or, uh, you know, I need to write more songs and, and get busy and, and I need to find a way, my own way to, to get, to get where I want to get, you know? So, yeah, I just used to go back in studio and, and, you know, sit down with my producer and, and write songs mainly. Yeah. With the, with the releases that you've put out thus far, as we talked about at the beginning, I think that you have such an interesting sound, and I think that the experiences that you've been a part of coming from Italy to Toronto, taking uh, an Italian approach to music, doing all the things that you can to integrate yourself into a Canadian music scene, which a lot of times people get lucky by meeting at Humber Jazz Program, or they started a band in high school, and these connections are made, you know, I went to get a coffee earlier today and I saw someone that I've started playing with music 20 years ago. And like, you know, these established connections sometimes happen at a very early age. And it's, it's a really hard thing to do what you do, which is, you know, assert yourself in it. And I think that you've got this absolutely fantastic sound that you're developing and it's unique and it's different, but it's understandable. With everything that you have going on right now, uh, I mean, how how excited are you to release the the new big release? Yeah, I'm I'm definitely excited. I'm trying to, um, you know, keep it up and and release one song every month, whether it's a collaboration or song, one of my own singles, or even a cover song. You know, and it, it really doesn't matter as long as you keep going and keep releasing content, um, and you know. As long as you can find your audience and uh, and people that support you, I guess. Uh, but yeah, like you said, I I really felt, especially the first few years, I really felt 
that I was lacking of those connections, like you mentioned, that you probably make in school and all that, because I I, I did all that, but in Italy, right? Yeah. So when, when I moved here, I started, you know, my grandma was so kind of supporting me and um, pushing me to, you know, she was just suggesting me, okay, if you want to go to school, we'll help you out. If you want to go to college and all that. So at one point I just went for a tour and I went to Seneca and Umber and all, all the possible schools, uh, private and non, you know, just to find out if, if there was a way for me to, you know, be interested in into studying here in Canada, but mainly for making connections, I'll be honest. And then I just decided that, I don't know, it wasn't worth for me and I'd rather go out and experience in person and meet people in person and go to venues and go to concerts in Toronto. And, that, and that's what I've been doing, you know? So it kind of worked out for me. And I, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe it would have been better to go to school, you know? But I, I moved here that I was already 25. And I mean, I, I wasn't old or anything, <laughs> I guess, but I, I really just wanted to make music before, that's all. Absolutely. And there's no point to do something that's only, you're only there for half the reason you're supposed to be or, or a quarter of it. It's way better to just go to the source at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So along with the music that you have recently and are to continue to release, I did notice that you have a merch line that you come up with and you got some seriously good clothes. Uh, how long have you been doing the merch? I noticed that you you're wearing the sweater. Yeah. Where can people find the merch? Well, um, I have um, I have my own uh, website, alessandromontelli.com, and then there's a merch uh, merch site with uh, Teespring, and but I do have the link in my bio on Instagram, so that's the easiest way. And I there's also a you know a view shop <laughs> that you can click on my my Instagram and you can, um, you know, visualize and support my merch. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing the podcast, Alessandro. And I got to ask, like I always do, what's next for you? Um, original songs. I want to do a lot of original songs and keep growing in the music here in Toronto. So you guys look, uh, I hope you guys look forward for my next original song. Thank you. Amazing. Oh, I'm doing this as a thing. I got to do this like this. I'd like to thank Alessandro Montelli for being on the podcast. Again, on the YouTube page, please subscribe. It's the Sounds Like Songs Network. Also hit the notification button. All About the Song comes out every Tuesday. For questions, comments, suggestions for a guest you'd like to hear on the podcast, send us an email, allaboutthesongpodcast at gmail.com. Our audio is on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, we are there. And please rate and review. So for Alessandro Montelli, episode 125 is in the book. We did it. A one-hitter. We did it. Batting a thousand. We'll see you next week. Bye.